Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Retro and it's the end of the week so that means time to show the stuff that came in this week. First up is the NES control deck set. This is the basic set with no extra games etc. And the box is in so so condition. It's not super, has some dents and scratches all around and it's missing the inlay, the styrofoam as you can see. It's just the NES in there. No styro. But still, finding an NES in the box, you don't see that every day anymore. There used to be a time when you could find NES's at every single flea market, but those days are long, long gone. So let's get to the Sega Mega Drive, aka Genesis in America. Altered Beast, one of my favorite games. Really loved playing this, especially when you had three of those blue orbs. And you go, power up, and you'd be a badass. Jurassic Park, The Lion King, Aladdin, Lion King and Aladdin, two of the best Disney games in my opinion. Sonic Park 3 and Sonic the Hedgehog part 1. Then some PC big box games. Uh, Ultima 7 part 2, The Serpent Isle. Didn't have this one and I actually found this at a flea market. It's been a long long time since I found some really hard to find PC games on a flea market. All of these by the way, all these PC big boxes you're gonna see now are from that flea market. So you can tell I was happy when I got there. Japanese aircraft collection for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, Tokyo scenery for flight simulator still sealed. Ultima 7 the black gate came from the same person had four really cool PC games This is a very dark box and you can see it's really dusty because I can wipe that off But uh, when you clean that up, it's in good condition, and this is the 5.25 inch floppy version I love that it doesn't get any older Then some more big boxes Again all from that same market strike commander Amazing Spider-Man and Captain America in Doctor Doom's Revenge. This is 3.5 inch floppy, yeah, 3.5 inch disc. Planescape Torment, Heroes of Might and Magic 3 Armageddon's Blade. And the last one is Wing Commander 2 Vengeance of the Kilrathi. What should we do next? Let's go for PlayStation 1. Pile of PlayStation 1. Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. Metal Gear Solid. Marvel vs. Capcom, Clash of the Superheroes, Street Fighter Alpha Warriors Dream, Street Fighter Alpha 2, Street Fighter Alpha 3, Street Fighter Collection Part 1, Dragonheart, Fire and Steel, Pandemonium, Rayman, and the last one is Croc 1, The Legend of the Gobos. First bunch of NES games and these came with the NES control deck that I showed you earlier. Golf, it came with a box but these um, old games can have a hang tab box and that means that on the back of the box here you have a hang tab where they used to flip it open and hang it in the, in the store cabinets problem is those hang tabs are really vulnerable they usually rip out and they rip off the entire top so the box of golf had it all the way up to here ripped off so it wasn't a giant hole so I decided to just throw that box away because there was no use for that anymore then these are complete arc rivals uh, adventure island part 2 Swords and Serpents, Super Off-Road, Soccer, the classic series version, so not the black box one, but the classics, Double Dragon 3, and Mermaids of Atlantis, the Riddle of the Magic Bubble, and this is an unofficial game, as you can see. It's by uh, American Video Entertainment, AVE. They have non-official cartridges. Short trip back towards the PC with some small box games. Battlefield 1942 World War II Anthology, so that has Battlefield 1942, The Road to Rome and Secret Weapons of World War II. Grand Prix 4, Call of Duty Deluxe Edition, which has Call of Duty and United Offensive. Carmageddon 2, Dru Druna Morbus Gravis, never heard of that, that's why I picked it up. Far Cry, Carmageddon TDR 2000, Dragon's Lair 3D, Anno 1503, uh, Half-Life Generation, The Magic Candle Part two and three together. Uh, Orange Box Half-Life 2 with uh, Team Fortress and Portal. Rise of Nations, Command & Conquer Generals, Half-Life 2 and Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Game Boy, the console I grew up with as a kid. A whole pile of cartridge only games. Metroid 2, Return of Samus, Pokemon Blue, Mickey Mouse, Wario Land, Mario Land 3, Battle of Olympus, Star Trek uh, 25th Anniversary, Pokemon Crystal, Wario Blast, Pokemon Silver, 
DuckTales 2 and Super Mario Land 2, the six golden coins, which is my favorite one, but I've said that before. Also a complete one, and that's not the least one, Kid Acres of Myth and Monsters. This is, yeah, and I'd not say really rare, but it's definitely an uncommon game. And uh, af before the Wii release of the Kid Icarus game, this was the only Kid Icarus game apart from the NES game. Now for something completely different. If you're a gamer, you probably like board games as well, because, well, it's basically a game, but then not on the PC. Um, on flea markets, I see a lot of board games, and I decided to start picking them up to get the things that I had as a kid, or the things that I wanted as a kid. First one is Twister. Not really a personal favorite, but my girlfriend really likes this one, so I bought it for her. And it's a nice thing for our uh, joint collection in board games. Then an old toy that I didn't buy for myself, but I found this. It's from 1982. It's in quite good shape. And, um, yeah, finding this for only one euro. Yeah, you'd be... In my opinion, you'd be stupid to let this leave, because this is probably quite rare or hard to find or uh, expensive. That's the sole reason why I picked it up. I'm not a Smurfs collector, not a big uh, retro toy collector only when it comes to masks, so that's purely for resale. Then a game my parents really love. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it, but my girlfriend loves it too, so that's another reason for picking it up. Rummy Cup, it's a, a number-based game. Then a game I did really love as a kid. And now I finally have it for myself. Onderuit, or I believe the English version is called Fall Down. Um, you have to get all those numbers down to the bottom as soon as possible. And you can use all kinds of strategy, etc. Really, really cool game. Loved playing that as a kid. Then the next one is not the original version, but it's a really pimped up version. It's a Battleships Seamaster. Comes with all sorts of electronic stuff, etc. But basically, it's all about the ships and the little pins and. Uh, Really love playing this, another strategy turn-based uh, turn based game. And then I was going to say the next one, but I don't have that here. I picked up some more, but those are at my garage. I did pick up something other strange. It's an ultra 8-bit video game. So, just take a look at this for a couple of seconds and tell me what kind of different rip-offs do you see here. First off, we see, we see a fake NES zapper. This controller is not really based on anything, it has the Super Nintendo colors, but the console is clearly a uh, Nintendo 64 and Ultra 64 was the original name for the Nintendo 64. Don't know if these ripoff guys knew that, but so it's the look looks of a, a Nintendo 64, but as you can see here it's an 8-bit console. So this is what they call a Fami clone. This is basically a Famicom board, what's in here, a fake Famicom board with uh, some built-in games and this one has, let's see, 84 different games. And the games you can expect in these are the same as you can expect in, uh, in those multi-cartridges. So it's all old school, really old early NES games or Famicom games, the black box games and uh, some of the Famicom games that didn't get released in Europe like um, Circus and Tank Battle etc. So that's the Ultra 8-bit video game system. What you see here is a whole set of handhelds that I got in. And some of these are Nintendo branded, other are no, others are not. You of course recognize Donkey Kong, which is uh, probably the most famous game on watch console. These are all tested by the way. Donkey Kong 2, Snoopy Tennis. These are non-Nintendo uh, branded, but some of these are really collectible. This is Space Castle. These are from Commodore and Space Shield and Cat and Mouse. Then we have Zaxxon, and um, it's by, I actually don't know, Sega. Made and sold under license of Sega. And uh, it has a really cool little joystick, a lot of options. And it's quite a fun game, it has a lot of extra options. And then this last one is uh, Space Adventure. And then this thing on the right here, I got this from an old friend that came over this weekend and he found this in an old uh, bin at his house. It's from 1985, so it's from the early release of the NES, as you can see here, if the light's good enough for you, there's 85. And basically what it does is... How awesome is that? I have no clue where this came from, where you could get this, if you bought it, if you got it with the game or something, but if you do have some information on this, let me know. It's a really cool little item, nice, uh, nice addition to my collection. A last round of PlayStation stuff and one random GameCube game before we get to the last NES games. Worms Blast for the GameCube and then for the PlayStation 2. Baldur's Gate 2 Dark Alliance, uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. This Gaia Hour of Darkness, this Gaia Hour of Darkness. 
Digimon Rumble Arena 2, Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3, and Sonic Gems Collection, which has Sonic CD, which is considered the best one, but personally, yeah, nah, not for me, I like Sonic 3 more. As promised, NES games. Cartridge of Mario Bros. 3, and these are all complete. Captain Skyhawk, Turtles 2, the arcade game, Bad Dudes vs. Dragon Ninja, and I've said this before, but just look at this guy's face. What the hell is wrong with him? And that other guy doesn't look too smart either. Yeah. Paperboy, Bart Simpsons vs. the Space, space Mutants. Um, I actually had this as a kid on PC. Still looking for the PC big box version with, uh, with the booklet where you had to uh, figure out Homer's face in order to start the game because it was sort of a copyright protection um, and it was a hard game um, let's see if it's on the back there was a first level was in town that was quite easy but then you get a level in the mall and there was a jump that was impossible if you finish this game you're the man I bow to you uh, defender of the crown Star Wars and the last one is Robocop but that's not the last one of course I have one little treat for the end of the video as usual and that's this one 92 Super Mario Family this is an unofficial cartridge and what it has is Mario 4 which is that um, armadillo hack with Mario in it Super Mario 3 Super Mario 2 American version so that's the one we got but also Super Mario 2 Japanese version that's why these cartridges are rare sought after and also quite expensive because this is one of the few ways that you can play uh, the original Mario Bros. 2, which we know as the lost levels in Super Mario All-Stars, on a 72 pins NES. This is an NTSC cartridge, so American NESs can play this without problems. European NESs need to be chip modded or you need to use a converter. But um, yeah, 72 pins way of playing the original Mario Bros. 2. So, that was it for this week. I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you have any questions, any uh, remarks or whatever, feel free to send me a message or reply to this video on YouTube. Uh, be sure to also like me on Facebook, facebook.com slash drretromd to stay up to date on everything. And um, I hope to see you again next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.